Hey everybody, what's up? It's Talking Tunes, the show where two guys sit around and BS about music. I'm Tony. I'm Kevin. And today we're going to be talking about a band very near and dear to our hearts, Children of Nova, a band from California that lasted, I believe, two or three years before they broke up and disappeared forever. Yeah, it was really, it was really short-lived, unfortunately. Yeah, and they took our hearts with it. Well, I wouldn't say that. I mean, no, but it, they I'm were not... really good. <laughs> yeah, they they were they were good while it lasted. Yeah, for sure. Maybe but, it's you know. maybe it's a good thing we didn't get to watch them like devolve into trash. That's true. I mean, it's it's better to go out on on I guess what there would would be their relative top than you know, watch them fade into oblivion. Yes, definitely. Uh, so before we get into that, though, Kevin, what have you been listening to this week? Uh, I'm really prepped. Let me pull up my Spotify real quick. Uh, I, well, of course, I've been listening to Children of Nova again mm -hmm. uh, in preparation for this. Um, I went back to that Starset album. Yeah. Because that was, it. Just, it just like I found myself like humming it to myself and like oh, I'm gonna listen to that again. And actually today. I listened to a lot of Skillet for some reason. Really? And I think that that came into part from the Star Set album, because there's a song on that called Monsters, and that made me think of the Skillet song. I'm like, I really want to hear that song now, so I just went through a bunch of their stuff. And they're 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 really good, man. Like they're they are probably my favorite band for like the pump you up kind of stuff. Skillet. I feel like really? a lot of their I, I think I think so. At least the, the most top-rated ones from Spotify. Yeah, I mean, I like Skillet a lot. I think they're fantastic. I just, I would not have expected that from you. Well, you know, you learn something new every day, I guess. I guess so. What about you? What have you, what have you been listening to? Well, like you, lots of Children of Nova, of course. Um, my Discover Weekly on Spotify has been giving me a ton of electronic music, because uh, I usually put that on while I'm doing homework. So I, I've got a lot of that on there. Lots of like uh, repetitive, almost club music, but not really. It's, uh, I don't know. I, I I wish it would stop giving me that. But um, I've been listening to a lot of that just because I've been busy. And then uh, actually, I've been listening to a lot of jazz and swing music because I went swing really? dancing last week. So. That's right. I did see that on your Snapchat story. Well, not on yours, on on. Uh... Your girlfriends. Ah, yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, so that's been pretty much stuck in my head uh, most of the week. It was a good mm. time. Definitely a hipster good. activity, though. Was it? Yeah. Lots of people there with, I... like, long, like, you know, admittedly great beards, but, like, big beards and, like, suspenders and fedoras. So. Yeah, got lots of flannel everywhere. Lots of flannel, yes. It was yeah, fun, though. I remember... Yeah, I remember in, uh, I, think it, I think it was high school sometime where, like, you and me and a bunch of people, like, went swing dancing in, like, the park or something. That was, that was a thing. That was a thing that happened. We actually talked about that on our, uh, on our way out there. Um, it was, yeah, we were, <laughs> we were expecting it to be like that. You remember, like, at the, at the park thing, um, they did, like, the short lesson and then, Nobody danced afterwards. It just sort of stood around awkwardly because there's no one on the dance floor, and no yeah, one wanted to be like. Because like, it was us, and then like nobody else. Yeah, except for maybe like a couple families who like came to just listen to the band, but it was supposed to be a swing dancing night. Like it was supposed to be all things. So when we were going out to this event uh, last week, we were like, "Oh man, I hope that doesn't happen again because that'll be awkward." Um, so we got out there and we like did the short lesson and then, uh, all these people get on the dance floor who are so much better than us. It was ridiculous. I'm like, I can do like the basic step they taught us two minutes ago. And then there are people who can do like the whole Charleston thing and like people who like don't know each people other. Through, yeah. Through legs and yeah no, kind of stuff. Like I kid you not. There were people doing that. It was insane. I'm, I'm sure there were. There are some people who are super into it. My sister and her her now husband, and they were in college. They were part of the swing dancing club. Oh, dude, that'd be cool. 
I don't think they ever got like super duper into it, but it was just like a fun thing that they did, I guess. Yeah, it was a nice way to kill an evening. It was a it was a lot of fun. It was like a three dollar cover charge, so you know. Good way to enjoy your your Valentine's weekend. Yes, exactly. On that note, uh, let's start talking about Children of Nova. That sounds good. We're gonna start with uh, Complexity of Light, right? The first album. Yes, they're technically an EP, but really, it might as well be a full length album. Yeah, because it was something I. I it like came back to me how long each of these songs are. They're like five minutes each. Yes, it's kind of insane, actually. Yeah, it's. I think they're in general a little too long. Really. Yeah, like especially. Well, we'll we'll get to the specifics later. Yeah, we'll we'll go through that. I actually don't feel like they're too long though. I these songs still manage to leave me wanting more even though they are really, really long. Um, so for anyone who hasn't uh, listened to Children of Nova before, which I assume is... Which is probably most of you. Yeah, everyone who listens to this probably. Um, they are from California, like we said. Um, their EP, Complexity of Light, came out in 2009. Um, they're a prog rock band, so lots of uh, weird, vague lyrics, uh, really good instrumentals, uh, cool rhythms. Um, all the things you'd expect from a prog rock band. Yeah. I was, uh, I think I read a review of, I don't know if it was just them in general or one of their albums. It's Somebody described them as like, if Coheed and Cambria started doing like synth rock or something. <laughs> yeah, okay. I can see that. Because like, they, they are a little bit more on the heavier side. Um in some some aspects yeah i agree um which i actually liked about them or at least uh well you can talk about it later but i think they're on the heavier side in complexity of light i don't know if i'd say the same about their second album but we'll get into that sorry i'm I'm just trying to decipher my notes here because i kind of (laughs) wrote them quickly while i was while I was listening, while I was going through it, and I'm I'm trying to remember what exactly I meant. All right, well, I'll bring us into the first song off the first EP. Is uh, the song is called "Complexity of Light" from the album "Complexity of Light." Apple named. Yes, and um, honestly, I think this is such a good opener, especially for a band that uh this is the first like recording they released you know this is the first thing you'd hear from them if you went out and bought Mm -hmm. the album exactly yeah and they do such a good job of showcasing every member of the band in this song it's awesome yeah yeah i think the the opening of it especially like really showcases like their musical talent and it it really it really sets the bar of like where it should be especially with the, the drummer and the percussion aspect of the beginning yeah absolutely um the song starts with that awesome droning guitar you know that just builds it up into it and it sends chills down my spine every time yeah it's it's one of those things where it sounds like everything's just like starting to kick on you know yeah i like that 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 build up to it yeah like they're all like booting up or something it's it's really sweet exactly um and then it breaks into that uh bongo solo i believe it is and i love that so much do you remember how much time we spent trying to learn that in uh in rock band rock band oh god we we spent forever trying to do that i actually remember spending like entire afternoons on training mode like slowing it down to 50 percent and then yeah doing it really slow and then you'd speed it up and be like i feel like half the notes like disappeared and it, it's awesome exactly yeah but i remember because like this entire the entire ep was off rock band yes and i remember there were there were days where like we're gonna get together and play it we're just gonna go through like this entire album like back to back to back to back on a playlist yeah and that was that was not an easy task, especially because uh, the singer has such an amazing range. Oh yeah! Thank God, Rock Band didn't actually make you hit the octave. Yeah, 
right? That would have been insane. Yeah, but we tried a lot. We tried pretty often. Yeah, this was like pre-puberty though, so we could almost get there. I think if I tried now, I'd blow up my voice. Um, full confession, I've I've tried and get real close, but not quite. And it like the the tonal quality isn't there, but. Well, yeah, it's of like, course not. Yeah, it sounds awful, actually. But whenever I'm listening to this album in the car, I I just go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I like. To, I'd, I'd love to hear that. I like to imagine uh, people like on the side of the street as I go by, you just hear like ah. <laughs> and it's like I'd, I'd love to hear. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what I hear. Next time we're together, I want to stand on the side of the road and hear you try to sing the super high screams. Like driving past, I want to hear the Doppler effect on that. All right, sounds good. That's just that's just the nerd in me wanting to experience that. All right, we'll we'll do that. We'll we'll just throw it up on a YouTube video. Exactly. That'll be the first million view video we get. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Worth. Because you know everybody's gonna be searching for for children of Nova after this. Uh yeah, dude, totally. Rip headphones. <laughs> yeah, um, but. Back, back to the song a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think it has a really good articulated beat, at least past me thought that, where it has, it has like a, a real good rhythm to it, even though the vocals are still kind of like fluid and flowing, which I think is kind of like, I'd, I'd call that their style, you know, because that's, that's part of prog rock to me anyways. You have like more fluid vocals where it's not like super defined in chunks kind of. Yeah. If that makes any sense. I, I think I get what you're saying. It's less like a block of uh, lyrics that you repeat and more like a, it's telling a story, you know? It, yeah, it flows it, from one thing to the next. You don't get like, you know, I, I'm trying to think of a good example. Um, it's it's not like a Beartooth song where it's like intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, breakdown, slightly altered chorus, end. Yes, very very there's like a lot of a lot of like intro then like kind of pre-verse verse chorus verse instrumental bridge chorus instrumental outro right it's like it's weird stuff like that yeah and i i really enjoy that and i one thing i love about that style is that it lets them sort of try and tell a story in the music um because I've tried so many times to figure out what the album, like what story the album is trying to tell. And um, I think it, it is a concept album, isn't it? Where like there is some kind of story going on in the background. I think we looked this up like back in like 09 or something. Yeah. We, we looked this up. There's some like weird story, like some like people fighting for something. There, Yeah, that's what I've gathered from it. I've never, I've because I, I actually checked this afternoon um, since we were talking about recording, I was like, maybe someone's written something about it since then. Cause I remember looking a lot in high school and never being able to find it. And, um, still there's nothing. Uh, but it definitely seems to be telling s some sort of struggle between two different groups. I, I don't know necessarily as two different groups, but, um, we can talk about the lyrics later, especially when we get into, uh, Arcadian and, um, Fall of Aphonia and, well, actually, pretty much all of them. But um, it, it sounds like there's some sort of some sort of like uprising or something like that. Um, but I, it's not it's not quite clear. And I know they've mentioned that there is a story. Like I think I remember seeing it on their Facebook page a couple times that they talk about it. Really? Yeah, I, I haven't been on their Facebook page and. Probably six years. Well, no, I just remember seeing it back then, and I remember, I remember them talking about when they were talking about the second album. They kept saying a new, the, a, um, a character from Complexity of Light would return, and of course, I'm like, I don't know what that means because I can't figure out who Complexity of Light is about. But, uh, yeah, there's there's definitely an overarching story. There's a weird concept saying that a character from a musical album will return in the next one. Yeah, it's it's just a weird concept that there's a character in an album, right? I mean, it's not it's not unheard of. I know um, Coheed and Cambria actually, they apparently have a whole set of comics that go with their albums, 
I just, really? Yeah, I just learned this a couple days ago. I had no idea because I, I wasn't big into them, but I was uh, uh, popped up on Reddit at some point and saw it. And I was like, huh, hmm. that's really interesting. So now I need to check that out, I guess. But um, I almost wish there was something like that to go with uh, Complexity of Light because I really would love to know what story they wanted to tell, you know? Yeah, it, it would make understanding what the hell he's talking about a lot easier because he, he doesn't really, like, again, with that sing-songy kind of voice, he doesn't, like, articulate a lot. And prog rock in general, to me, is just a lot of nonsense where it's kind of strung together. Yeah. So. Well, if you look at the lyrics, uh, I mean, if for Complexity of Light, um, like, there's, like, Counting the Crow's Feet, I Won't Bind to the Order's Reach. And then later, they have the song The Order. So I assume there's some sort of, like, quote-unquote order that is like a council it sounds like um but again i I wish i wish like i really want to know more about the the world they're talking about yeah but you know we'll we'll probably never get that but no probably not mr we should uh hunt them down and ask (laughs) <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how we would go about doing that but i mean i Dude, guess you want to go try. on a road trip we can go to california um i'm going on a road trip this weekend and i don't know if i can spare any other weekends all right that's fair um so going back to the song uh after that um i i think i speak for both of us when i say my favorite part of this song is that build up that they do after it drops down low um you know you know what i'm talking about right yeah i I, yeah i I know what you're talking about i think i I even have a note that's like scream has excellent build and release yeah because it they do the two choruses and then they go into that sort of bridge and uh you know they keep it so quiet and um then the drums start to like pick up and they're doing the um uh it's like that, and he's got the cymbals going, and then that yeah. scream is just one of my favorite, uh, favorite parts, like it, favorite thing in any song ever. Yeah, it's and so I, I especially, I especially like the way that they do it, where it's like the whole build up, and there's just like that, that like half a second of just like that ambient noise from the build up that just kind of like lingers, yeah, and just like silence, and then it just hits. I think that was a real good use of like silence to like add to the next impact yes and it, Which I, I, I think they kind of overuse at points um i think it's more so in the second yeah album, they kind of overuse like that second of silence but i think there it was it was a really good place for it right and especially in an opening song when you kind of want to you really need to pull like listeners in um exactly yeah, yeah they like they sort of toss everything out in complexity of light yeah i mean they're they were all like fantastic musicians Mm -hmm. and that's it's certainly on display yeah and uh one more thing i want to mention before we go on to the next song um it the song ends with the lyrics it's been seven years rising up eyes glow never shine so vividly it's the mess that makes us weak the hand that never feeds which also makes it sound like some sort of um uprising or like struggle between some sort of like like either people and like a government or people and some sort of power you know yeah i think it's it's like kind of starting to come back to me now i think i remember it's being something about there's something like corbin is the name of some like dark god or something because there is a lyric about corbin of the night in one yes. of the songs i don't remember exactly which uh, one second sight blackout yes but i don't remember who he's fighting Probably i think he's the enemy nova? i don't remember who's fighting him I, th- I think so i think yeah i think nova's the uh like god of light or something like that if you know i do remember reading that i wonder where we saw that i don't remember at all but it's it's coming back to me ever so slightly yeah i think you're right all right so moving on then to arcadian the second song on complexity of light 
I like the lead in how these two songs are connected together. Yeah, they they do a really good job of flowing these songs together. And yeah, they do it. Go ahead. Uh, I I love the guitar opener. The don't dig it in, don't don't don't. You know, it's it's a really cool little riff that they have going on at the start. Yeah, especially with the the lead in that comes in, which is kind of like that ambient, like almost staticky sound. Yes. Where it's like that that riff kind of like breaks through a little bit, and you can start to hear it shine. Right. And I, I really like this one. Um, I actually used to not like it as much, I think. Like, when we first heard it, I was like, oh, it's not going as good as Complexity of Light, but it's grown on me a lot since then. Yeah, I think I remember it was it was okay. It was never one of my favorites. And e even now, uh, listening to it again, it's still not, like, one of my favorites from that. But, you know, it, it's, it's not bad. Yeah. Um... One thing I do love a lot, a lot about it is um, the bass is really good in this song. Like I think the bass player shines a lot, and um, especially when they get to the instrumental, um, they do a really awesome. There's like sort of a drum fill that it pauses, and the bass just does that, doo -doo 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 -doo, and I love that lick. <laughs> it's so fun. Yeah, I think I remember which one you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I, th I think something that Arcadian does really well is on those uh, just just for a little bit of context I listened to the second album before going to this one so some of my notes are kind of comparing this one to the other one which doesn't make a lot of sense because we're doing this one first but yeah, it's fine. my bad um, something that I, I feel like Arcadian did really well um, that the second album didn't do is I feel like the the music and the vocals did a good job of like building together, mm -hmm. where like the the music builds up intensity, but the vocals also do a little bit more, because I, I feel like the vocals in this album in general were less restrained, like the the singer was able to use more of his his like super awesome range, and like the power of the the high screams along with his his normal range. I think he was able to use that that range and that build to build up with the music. Yeah. Um, which I think the second uh, the second main build of this is where that really comes in. I don't I don't remember exactly the rhythms to it, but it's like the second build section. They they do a good job of building both at the same time. So when it gets to like the release point, it doesn't feel like one of them's ahead of each other and then all of a sudden it's like a second or two into the build and all of a sudden the vocals are like, oh shit, we're there. Right. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. They definitely do a really good job of uh, keeping that all together in this album. And especially in Arcadian. Um, also, side note that I'd like to point out, this lyrics site that I'm on um, appears to have some sort of profanity filter. Because, you know the line, you need to assume control? Yeah. Yeah. On this site, it is, you need to A star star oom control. What? Which, yeah, I think it's hilarious. That doesn't make any sense, but okay. I guess. I just, I think it's funny. Um. But yeah, and, and this one, I still think... Um. Uh, there's a, lyrics in it that point to that struggle again, I think, with the uh, two hands to construct a nation and, or two hands to rebuild a nation and help this world to grow. Um, and they say, I fear for the story in which we're calling apocalyptic ending. Which is like, uh, it seems it seems that there's like some sort of fight that they've been preparing for, it sounds like. Yeah, and I, th I think, you know, like, like kind of looking back, because if, if you remember the, the lead ins to the songs, the first one, Complexity of Light, leads into Arcadian, which leads into Follow the Phony, the third song. And then there's no lead into Second Sight Blackout, which is the fourth one. Oh, that's a good point. But the fourth and fifth are tied together. But the sixth, but sixth we collide, is it really? And yeah, we collide to me, separate. Yeah. To me, 
um, Second Sight Blackout and The Order, those kind of almost sound like a call and response kind of thing. Because Second Sight Blackout, it's you know it's got that no uh, <clears throat> no lead into it, and it's got that more interlude style at the beginning where it's like if if this was a musical, right? It'd be like the moment where something bad happens and all of a sudden like this one main character is like on stage by themselves just like talking to themselves in a song that's kind of what it sounded like to me and then the next one sounds like somebody's like oh i heard that i'm about to like drop some knowledge on you <laughs> uh, a good choice of phrasing uh, um, it's, it's just something that I, I feel like i might be looking too much into it but i feel like the connection of how the songs were how the songs flow into each other, you know, might have some kind of have some kind of like backbone to the arc of the story. I I might be looking way too much into it, but you know, there might be something there. I I think I actually agree with you, and I don't think you'd be looking too much into it just because it's a concept album. Like that's the kind of thing that they would do. I think, or or maybe we're talking at our asses, which is entirely possible too. But I mean, it's it's the point of why we're doing this. So exactly. Uh, no, I totally agree with you. I think you're right. And I actually never uh, never made that connection between um, the first three songs all leading into each other and then the pause between Fall of Aphonia and Second Sight Blackout. That's a really good point. Yeah, and, and just the way that Second Sight Blackout starts, where it's more sounding like an interlude as yeah. that, like, hard, that harder beat that some of the other ones have. Right. Um, so... Moving on from Arcadian, shall we talk about kind of, Phonia? Yeah, we're kind of jumping around a little bit, but... Yeah, well, it's yeah, easy to, to it. talk about the whole album, or the album yeah, as a whole. Yeah, because it's a concept album. It's, it's all supposed to kind of flow together. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so Fall of Aphonia, third song. Um, I love the opening of this song. I, I don't like the opening. Really? I don't like the the high pitch singing like where it's exposed how it was where it's not behind a lot of like the heavier beats and impact points it just sounds really exposed and kind of weak to me huh i i guess i could see that i actually like it for the um for all the cool little like i i actually i just wrote in my notes pew pew um because they do all those like <laughs> electronic like noises. laser noises yeah and I, I really like, I like the way they play with it. I, I think that's, it's cool. But um, I, I guess I could see that why you'd think the um, exposed vocals are a little weaker there. Yeah, it just, I, I like the his normal voice range a lot more than the high range. But it's like the high range of him singing, not doing the screams. Yeah. Like I, I just, it just, it's a little, it's a little weak in my opinion. Right. And uh, actually, this song I'm not as big on as a whole, though, um, compared to the first two. Ow, I hit my knee. Um, I, I think I'm not a huge fan of the chorus, really. I, I feel, because um, it's really heavy. It's got that, like, but it, it feels like it's really open, I guess, during the chorus. Um it's like they don't really it's like the instrumentals just just play the beat and then there's no like filler from them which kind of bothers me a little bit yeah i think it gives me where it's like separated and they don't let the notes kind of play out yeah and i i think that's i think they wanted that but i'm not a huge fan of it like just musically yeah yeah, I, I have a note in here that uh, says Deteach, detached beat section doesn't fit to me. I don't remember exactly what that means. I think it's the part where it's like that breakdown. Hmm. I, you know, I'm using the term breakdown loosely, where it's yeah. like a lot of that. I'm thinking if I'm thinking of the right section, it's like the banana Oh yes. That that just like the instrumental. Little, yeah, the instrumental it, it didn't really fit in my opinion. Yeah, I, I would agree with that, because that's kind of the problem that I've had with the song since I first heard it. it. It just feels a little more disjointed. But at the same time, um, 
looking at it in terms of the whole story, if Second Sight Blackout is supposed to be a um, sort of a pause, like like you described it, like the the main character up on stage, like spotlight, like reflecting on the horrible event that he just witnessed, Fall of Aphonia, it sounds like, would be that like sort of big uh, horrible event. Um, I assume the fall of some major city or something, it sounds like, you know? I guess that makes sense. So it, it would make sense story-wise why it would be a little bit more disjointed and chaotic sounding. Yeah. I guess I, guess I didn't really think about that. Right. And, and I mean, I, I still don't like it that much, but I, th- I think that it fits in the album still. Yeah, it, it makes sense story-wise, even though if it doesn't quite make sense music-wise. Right. But, you know, I, I guess it, it's difficult to do both. That's, that's why, you know, concept albums aren't a, a huge thing. Yeah, I mean, you. I feel like it really... Uh, I like people trying to tell stories in music, but I also feel like it limits you a lot. Because there are a lot of expectations that come with it, you know? Um, right. Like you're you're expected to uh, usually at least come close to rhyming your your lyrics, and um, they need to follow that rhythm, and they need to follow the meter that your uh, instruments are in, and it may. I think it really has to hamper your storytelling ability. Yeah, it it's it certainly would be easy. God knows I couldn't write a concept album. Oh, yeah. No, me neither. Especially not one that's prog rock. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you have anything else to say about Fall of Aphonia? Uh, not really. Probably my least favorite on the album, so I didn't really have much of an opinion on it. Yeah, I, I would probably agree with you there. Um, still, still a song that I enjoy, but I, I wouldn't go out of my way to listen to just this one. It's it's good in the context of the album. Yes, I would agree with that. So that uh, that'll bring us to Second Sight Blackout. The the interlude one starts as an interlude, yeah. Yeah, definitely. It, it starts as an interlude. Yeah. Now, I I have I have a note in here that I would have preferred if maybe not necessarily like they made the entire song like an interlude, but I would have liked maybe a short interlude song where it was like, because the interlude part of this is like a minute, maybe a minute and a half. Mm -hmm. I would have liked like maybe a two and a half to three minute interlude song where it's just like the interlude style that the beginning of Second Sight Blackout was. I feel like they could have done a lot with that. Uh, yeah, I can see where you're coming from, although I don't necessarily agree. Um, I think if they kept it as a separate song, that'd be kind of cool. But one of the things that I like about it is uh, the transition from that interlude sound into what I would consider, like, you know, the core sound of Second Sight Blackout. Because um, it does that, uh, your curse will bring the end of all, and they'll come for, blah, and then... It, it just hangs, you know, and that's when it, like, really kicks out. And to me, that sounds like um, the character that uh, we're watching is sort of, like, has an epiphany and is, like, I, I assume decides he's going to be an asshole because that's what it sounds like <laughs> based on the rest of the words. Um, but it, it's it sounds like there's that, um, that, like, click in his brain, you know? That's like yeah. this is what I need to do, and this is how I'm gonna do it. Right, and it it's it kind of transitions into that where he goes from like talking to himself to talking to other people, being like, "Listen, like we need to get up and start fighting against this order." Yeah, that's the thing. I I can't tell. I actually always assumed this was uh, whoever was singing in Second Sight Blackout was actually more of the villain. Really, I, I I thought it was the opposite. Really? Are you looking up the lyrics? Yeah, I'm I'm looking up the lyrics because I think this is, might be the one where it it mentions Corbin, Corbin of the Night. Yeah, it is. I I have the lyrics here. I can send them to you. I I, I found them. All right. 
Um, but yeah, I, for me at least, the reason I get that vibe is like, um, the the words are they don't know the future I've seen, so cry for the dawning of the end and honor me. I, that sounds pretty, pretty dark to me at least. Yeah, I see the the reason where I think this is is more of the the hero singing because there's a part I'm here to appear to enlighten you to see the light so I can take it from their eyes. Are you listening now? And then you know a little bit more, and then so hide your face. You are no longer Corbin of the night. Your curse will bring an end of all, and they'll come for you. It's it sounds more like he's starting to threaten him, and like you can't keep doing what you're doing. Hmm. I wonder. That that kind of makes sense too. Maybe it's like two different people. Maybe that could this, be it. This, 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 will, this will blow your mind real quick. What if Nova and Corbin are the same person? Oh my god! Like the movie Split with James McAvoy. You, that could be correct. It's actually it, just a big metaphor. Because. It almost sounds like, because there's, it almost sounds like he's talking to himself at some points. Yeah. But at the same time, he says, I'll burn their eyes if they don't see. I'll bring a fate of, uh, oh, they're missing a word. But I'll bring a fate of uh, something that leaves me cold as my flame becomes the seed. But then it goes and it says, uh, leave your homes now before he sees you all crawl. So maybe it is. I would go with two separate people, personally. It could be. Possibly. Like, this could be that sort of, like, struggle between Nova and Corbin. Yeah, this could be, like, the, the beginning of it. Yeah, unless it's Nova and Corbin arguing with each other. Like, devil and angel on the shoulder of whoever is the, uh, the person speaking in Second Sight Blackout. Right. Uh, but musically, this is... I love this song. I, I think it's so good. Yeah, I, I think the music... It, the musicality, again, uh, much like Complexity of Light, it really comes out in this one. Mm -hmm. You know, it's... Although, like I said, I would prefer, you know, if the interlude was... was like a separate song or... You know, it was a little bit longer. It they do do a good job of having that transition, and still making it musical and not like super abrupt. Like I feel like it could have been. They did a good job of like doing enough build up to it, where it's not just like out of nowhere. Yeah, I I would agree with that. Um, but like I said, I like the transition. Um, and I love I love the way they get into the beginning of the song with that nice like snare roll into it and they the guitar has like the nice wah wah effect on it it's really awesome i love that beginning yeah i i agree with that yeah it's a it's up there on my uh list of favorites on the album for sure yeah um i, I i'd still put it behind complexity of light oh, i'd but... agree with that yeah yeah it, it's you know it, it's good um and i think the the flow into the order also helps it out and helps out the order as a song too yeah like i said i i thought i i thought of it more as like the response section to second type blackout and I, I, you know, looking at the lyrics to the order, it kind of makes sense. Where I think you were right, where it's the other way around, where the order is the hero and Second Sight Blackout maybe more the villain role. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I actually also thought I don't necessarily know that I think the order is the hero, because even the order has a couple of things that has me like, oh, they don't necessarily sound like. Uh, like good people in this song. Assuming, I assuming the order is like the group that we think it is. Um, like it, it's sort of it sounds like it goes back and forth a lot because um, 
it starts with like that really high pitched voice, um, just like the ooh and then mm -hmm. um, when it comes back down, I, I feel like they the vocals switch a lot between sort of more of a sing songy voice, and then they go into like a more heavy like uh, almost like growl growl type voice. It, it sounds similar to uh, how he sings a lot for a lot of Second Sight Blackout. Yeah. And, you know, it, it may be that both The Order and Second Sight Blackout have both of them, and that's kind of why they're connected together, is because they are going back and forth, like, the entire time. So it makes sense that they're, you know, both connected like that. Right. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's almost like this chaos building up to uh the a final yeah a final collision yeah um but uh one of the things i really like about this is um how uh oh shoot i lost it um i had a, a thing here in the lyrics that i wanted to talk about and now i i forget where it is way to go I know, I'm so sorry. Oh, they say, there's the part where they're like, um, are we the answer? We're the answer to living again. And that's why I think it's like a debate almost going on between this group of people. Like, are we doing the right thing to, to fix, you know, fix what happened? Right. True. I, th I, I think, you know, it. I, th I think you're right about that. Thank you. I, I also, no part of the reason I think that it doesn't necessarily, uh, one other thing that I think makes it not the hero is that um, at the end it says, peace won't save us anymore. I can decide your fate because it's mine. And on mine he screams. And he's like, because it's mine. And yeah. so I'm like, I feel like it's sort of that back and forth and they settle on doing, the, I guess what we would consider the wrong thing. Um, it certainly seems like it takes a turn towards them being sort of like oppressive true and, and on that point of um because it's mine where he starts screaming i didn't like the actual screams in the song very much really yeah i i just don't think that the i just don't think the singer did it justice gotcha i don't know it's just i i would have i i like the normal singing, the high screams, but the actual like low screams, not my favorite. Yeah, I think he definitely doesn't sound like he's had any sort of experience with it before that. Because it, it could be interesting if uh, if it was more the type of screams we're used to hearing in some of the music that we listen to on a more regular basis, you know? Right. Yeah, although... although... I don't know if that necessarily would have worked better. Yeah, maybe not. He tries. That's all you can really say about it. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just saying. What, what is he going to hear this? I no, doubt. of course not. All right, we collide. All right, final song. Collide. Again, no lead in. So this was the final act all on its own. Yes. The third act, some may say. Yeah, some would call it that, yeah. And it's as long as the previous two songs as well. Put together. Yeah, it's like I mean, seven minutes. It is a long song. Which I think doesn't help it at all. Some of it seems a little scattered to me. Hmm. It's a little, a little disjointed. It doesn't have a lot of the hooks. It, after, like, the the first, like, beginning and, and build up where he starts. Um, shit, I need to find the lyrics exactly, but like the first like little lead up before they start getting into that like regular beat, yeah. Um, where it starts, it's like I, I need to find the lyrics, but it there's after that first um, lead up part, I think it's it's a little disjointed and it kind of lose it kind of loses you a little bit, especially with it being seven minutes. Yeah, I, I think it sounds like they're trying to um, change up the feeling a lot. I think partly because it's such a long song and partly because 
it almost sounds like there's more they wanted to do with the album because it definitely has I, I think at least three really distinct feels to it um because they have that sort of feeling that you get during the verses then the chorus has more of a an upbeat um i shouldn't say upbeat that implies it's happy but it, it's faster a little louder and uh more straight rhythm wise and then um there's the end which uh sort of slows it down again and gets a little heavier yeah yeah that's that's true the 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 part that i was talking about before where the lead up to um and the the release point where he goes arcanites go and call the names of all that we've lost they won't stop our pain they will know our rage so we step beyond our faith again after that point um that like little section there probably my favorite song my favorite section of the whole album that that part gives me chills every time I hear it. Oh, the yeah, the da da da, da da da. Yeah. 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 Fun fact. Um, I don't know if you remember this, but uh, there actually was a time where I was number one in the world uh, singing this song on Rock Band. Holy crap! I remember that. I know, cause there was like eight people that did it. Yeah. And I was the only one who did it on the expert. I do remember that. I wonder what it's like now. I'll probably nowhere close to the top, but I mean, I, on one hand, I'd assume, but on the other hand, like how many people would have picked up the song since then? The Rock Who Band knows? library's only gotten bigger. True. I guess you're not wrong. Not wrong is where I always aim to be. <sighs> that's that's a sweet spot right there. Yeah. Can you look um, up Rock Band song leaderboards? You can certainly try. Uh, while you do that, I do want to talk about. Um, one cool thing that I think they do in this song, um, I'm trying to remember where it is. Um, uh, um, at, at one point, there's a pause, and he does another high-pitched scream. Um, I'm trying to remember what lyrics it's after. Uh, shoot. Either way, it, 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 it builds up to another high-pitched scream again. And at the same time, underneath that, they do a low scream. And I, I feel like that's supposed to be the, like, collision between, like, good and evil there. Right. Because I think the low scream definitely is supposed to be the villain, while the high scream is usually the hero. And mm. every time I hear that scene, I always imagine, like, you know, like, almost, I want to think, like, Pacific Rim, like, giant robots, you know? Like just crashing into each other. Yeah. I, I always imagine this this song is like a huge battle between good and evil. Yeah, I am. Uh, my Xbox gamer tag is not in the top one hundred for We Collide on vocals. That's so unfortunate. I know. I'm I'm disappointed. Yeah, we'll have to buy the game and just. Practice. I still have it. That's a good point. I'm trying to find complexity of light. Maybe I'm still on that one. I don't think I ever got to number one on this one, but. Um, also, another interesting thing. Um, complexity of light starts. Uh, starts with complexity of light. Um, and, you know, in complexity of light, they actually. <laughs> I gotta stop saying that it's losing all meaning. <laughs> um,. They, there's a line that is uh, counting the crow's feet. We Collide ends with call all your crows and uh, you won't call all the falling birds to fly from me. So right. I, I feel like the crows have some sort of significance, but I have no idea what. Well, the the album cover is like a human figure with a crow head. That's true, yes. So that's obviously something to do with it. Maybe uh arcadian is a crow nation maybe so, yes and it's a struggle between good and evil told through the eyes of crows it could be i mean Th that that's the thing <laughs> it's like <laughs> nobody it's knows not that out there right I mean, it's not that out there but i don't think you know anybody would think of that really 
It's like uh, it's like the trees by Rush. I need to listen to more Rush. Rush is so good, but I just don't ever think of them. Yeah. It's a shame, really. It really is. Maybe, maybe we'll uh, do an episode on them eventually as an excuse. It's the best uh, three-man band of all time. That is true. Um, it still blows my mind that this is three guys. It is really insane. Uh, in order to keep us on track, because we're already at 50 minutes. Oh, doctor. Um, so, I guess, should we start talking about Impossible Landscape, or do we want to do a separate episode on that alone? Because we talked for a long time. Uh, we, we thought we were going to talk for a couple minutes on each song. And yeah. uh, I think we talked for a much longer time. Yeah. Uh, the, the thing is, I feel like I wouldn't have a lot to say about uh, Impossible Landscape. I definitely I definitely like it a lot less than Complexity of Light. Yeah, let's do a really quick... quick. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll pick, and, pick and choose some of our, our songs we feel we need to talk about. Uh, I have a lot of notes. Um... Go for it. I'll throw in my two cents when it, when well, it applies. <laughs> no, let's let's do um, let's talk about some of the differences that we hear between the albums instead of going into specifics, just to so that we can wrap this up. Okay. Um, uh, you you go ahead and start. Uh, I think the biggest one to me is the vocals sound a lot more restrained and they're more in the background, um, where I feel like in Flexi Light like, they're more in the forefront and. It has it allows for a lot more of that impact, and I think I mentioned this before. Um, I feel like he doesn't expand very much in that vocal range. He stays in that low kind of sing song, ninety five percent of the time. Mm -hmm. I feel like it could have been expanded um, to utilize more of his his pitch and to change up the style from that like sing song the whole time because it got a little old towards the end. Like I guess I get that that's their style, but uh. yeah, you know I kind of actually agree with you, um, especially because complexity of light has such good impact. And right there, there's no good impact point in this like entire album, I'd say. Yeah, and, and in fact, like it, it, at the risk of sounding very uh, like hipster esque, it, it sounds much more formulaic than complexity of light did because every song has like verse chorus verse chorus outro and it admittedly like they're they're interesting and they're good but it's it's much more by the books uh which kind of stinks and i i just feel like you're right it doesn't have that impact that a lot of the songs in complexity of light has right this one it, more in general was just restrained and I wouldn't necessarily call it like boring or anything like that, but it's not not what uh, complexity of light was. Yeah, that's that's pretty much how I feel about it. I like it as an album. I listen to it occasionally, every now and then, um, and I, I like it. I still sing along to it. I just wish that they did more with it. I wish they took it more towards. Uh, like further in the heavy direction of complexity of light and less towards the like melodic side. Yeah, same, but I feel like they did the heavier better in complexity of light. Actually, a lot of the lighter stuff from Possible Landscape I preferred over the heavier stuff because like I also mentioned previously, the build between the vocals and the music I felt was disjointed a lot where the music would build but the vocals wouldn't. And it's like, is there going to be something? Or is it just like they're building for no impact? And I feel like no impact was the answer a lot of the time. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Although, one song on Impossible Landscape that I think has a really good impact um, is The Troubled Soul. And it has... Um, it does the... Uh, it does an, a really awesome thing where in the chorus... Um, or it comes out of the chorus, and there's a short pause, and the drums have... It's just a ding, like on the ride cymbal. It's like, ding, ba, da, na, 
do 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 and, and that's when it sort of kicks off and that's like the one time in the album that i feel like they actually hit a build up right um right. but the rest of them do feel just like they don't quite get to where i want them to be at least right and i i think i remember the point you're talking about in the troubled soul cuz at that point where the drum has got the little ding on the cymbal it changes from like an articulated beat to letting the notes play out a little bit longer and there's that style shift to it which i think also was a lot of what complexity of light did because they had a lot of those moments where it goes from that that's kind of more in the opposite complexity of light did where it had a lot of more of the sing song intro and it flipped to a more articulated thing this is just kind of that same thing in reverse though yeah i would agree with that which i think is cool um but it doesn't quite do it for me and it doesn't really do it the rest of the album it really doesn't, because it's kind of the only one that does that well, anyway. I feel like yeah. they tried to do it on a couple other ones. The The only other song that I remember listening to the originally, when it came out, the only song I really remember liking was Feel Alive. Feel Alive's good. It has a little bit of that towards the end, not a whole lot, but it has a little bit where it it gets, I wouldn't say heavier, but more like dense with sound yeah they also they do um they have that cool i <laughs> you should see my notes here um they have a cool thing where they hang first of all they also have the pew pew noises that fall of a phonia has i wrote that down you know um, the pew pew noises the pew pew noises then uh they do a cool thing um it's i think in the second verse they do that um they the instruments hang and he does, uh, and we suffer. And I, I really like the way they like hold that. I, I think it's a cool like, um, like skip in the rhythm. And also, I really like the ending because he goes to that falsetto, and it reminds me more of how he used it in Complexity of Light. Right, he goes up to that more high screen, even if only for a brief moment. Yes. That's it. It brought back memories of a better time. Yeah. I actually wrote that uh, Feel Alive has a very, like, complexity of light intro. It starts with, like, that sort of droning guitar and builds up. Right. That, that might be why it was my favorite on this one, because it, it felt the most, like, complexity of light. Yeah. And, you know, what's funny about the album is that I think if it, um, if it was from anyone else, I would really like it. I think because it's from Children of Nova, and I always compare it to Complexity of Light, that's part of the reason that I'm like, ah, it's just not that that amazing. Really? Yeah. That, that, that's interesting. Because I, I feel like, although I do compare it a lot to Complexity of Light, I don't think the reason that I don't particularly like it is because of the comparisons. I think it's... Like, the, the fact that it doesn't have those impact points doesn't have anything to do with complexity of light. It just, the build-ups don't lead to the proper releases. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong. I, it would be, I mean, obviously there's no way to know, but that's at least the yeah. way I feel about it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's your opinion on it. Oh, your yeah. opinion and my opinion, you know. This would be really boring if all we did was just agree with each other, right? That is a good point. But yeah, so that's that's impossible landscape, and we're coming up on an hour. So, shall we wrap it up? Um, I don't have any less thing to say, really. No. Yeah, me neither. I think I think we covered it all. For for the most part, yeah. Any and now, big things. Right, and now we have a better idea of how long it takes us to talk through an album. Right. So this is you know, we we, we changed up a little bit. Uh, we're not going through an anthology, a whole disc discography. We're going you know, more in depth. So, you know, this was a, a learning experience, I'd say, for the two of us. Yeah, and we, we'd really like to focus a little bit more on details in the albums rather than trying to talk about six or seven albums all at once and just kind of blowing past everything in them. Because I feel like that turns into... Just like, what do you think of the album? Oh, it's pretty good. I like this song. Me too. All right, next album. Yeah, exactly. Or we, we'd hit like one or two off of that and didn't really kind of push aside everything else. 
yeah. So we'll we'll continue to play with it and see how it goes. Uh, we'll pick an album for next week and maybe try to go through that too. Yeah. If, do you have... uh, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, do you have anything in particular you were thinking of for next week? To for next week, yeah. I I haven't really been like Jones into listening to to listen to anything specific. Yeah. Although you did pick this week, so I guess I it's my turn to pick week, next so, week. Yeah. I mean, if we're gonna throw something out there, I'd always throw out professional rapper. We can talk about professional rapper. God, can we please? Yeah, dude. Dope. All right, confirmed. Next week, professional rapper by Lil Dicky. Awesome. We'll, we'll we'll break from the the rock and punk and prog rock. We'll go a slightly different direction with a bit more rap. Hey, man, it sounds good to me. Proof to the people that we're not just one-trick ponies. Oh, yeah, that's how I would describe us. <laughs> you, know, you, you never know. Right. That'll be, that'll be interesting to see how that goes. I think we should go as in-depth on our uh, analysis of the overarching story of professional rapper uh, as we did into Complexity of Light. You joke, but I think there is one. There's four interludes. <laughs> that's a really good point. Uh, we'll, well, we'll, that's a uh, that's a topic for next week. Yeah, we'll talk more about that. That should be fun. Right, well, I got nothing else. Me neither. Thanks for listening, guys. Following with us into week number two slash three, dep- <laughs> depending. Depending on if Adobe is going to try and screw you again. Yeah, let's not let's not rant about that out loud <laughs> <laughs> online. At, once recording stops. Of course, yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for listening, guys. Have a good weekend, and we'll see you next time. See you.